morning everyone uh, welcome to this class we continue from where we stopped last week we will start with a word of prayer and uh, thank you jesus thank you today lord jesus we give you all glory and presence jesus lord jesus we need to glorify lord i surrender everything into your hands this class and everything we are going to learn lord jesus lord help us and open our hearts that we can receive if you want to uh speak lord jesus thank you for everything in jesus name we pray amen that is somebody done you mean all right so um from the last class uh i hope that we have understood that there is the spiritual realm which has both the kingdom of light as well as the kingdom of darkness and there can be an influence of uh, these realms on us uh if we engage with them and we saw you know a couple of things we said that there can be disciplines that causes us to engage the spiritual realm we said uh, there can be sacrifices that engage the spiritual realm or there can be you know things like rituals um, that one can perform you know it can also connect them to the spiritual realm and of course uh, dedications now we did keep our focus on uh, the kingdom of darkness just so we recognize the different things that um, could happen from the kingdom of darkness because we are studying about believers authority and what is our intention we want to take authority on the works of the enemy uh, so in the last class there was this understanding that uh, um open doors can uh, bring the influence of the enemy into people's lives in general and if believers are not careful you no know, we said that isn't it we we also clarified and we said that a believer cannot be demon possessed because it's just not scriptural to say that a believer is demon possessed we are possessed if you want to use the term possessed by the holy spirit okay and we generally even don't even say possessed because um you know when we use the term possessed it's more like the spirit is ruling the person the person has no um no opportunity to exercise their own free will so usually that term possessed gives us that picture but we are we have the holy spirit living in us but we don't use the term possessed okay but if you look at it that way yes the holy spirit is the one who um fills us up the holy spirit is the one who lives in us but he doesn't take control of us in a way that we cannot exercise our own mental faculties okay so all these things were quite clear in the last uh class and we said that the spiritual realm again talking about um the the paths of darkness so they can recognize spiritual authority there are two kingdoms that spiritual kingdoms that can influence us in the natural realm all of us either belong to the kingdom of light or the kingdom of darkness you know there's no gray zone like nobody can say that uh, um i'm not part of the kingdom of light uh, but i'm not part of the kingdom of darkness also automatically if someone's not part of the kingdom of light what happens they are part of the kingdom of darkness the, the uh, satan and his demonic powers you know they rule over those who are not born again and who are not part of um, the kingdom of jesus christ we also see that there is delegate delegated authority which is given to the people of the kingdom of light what do we mean by that see we are part of the kingdom yes but as we study 
uh, scriptures and we are also going to study in this course we have been sent by jesus you know we all authority on heaven and earth uh, i have i give it to you jesus has given us the authority so when i'm saying that i am a part of the kingdom of light i must also recognize that i have what is called as delegated authority so when i'm sent he didn't just send me empty handed he gave me authority and then i am sent so that is known as delegated authority we can talk about so many other things like the authority in the name of jesus that we carry the authority by the spirit the holy spirit you know that that we can uh, exercise so every believer one is we are part of the kingdom of light which is clear cut we are also given delegated authority every believer believers may know this or they may not know this you see that that's the uh, place where uh, there are challenges if we don't understand this we might think that the powers of darkness can rule and reign in our lives but when we understand i am part of the kingdom of light i have delegated authority the way we respond to life or to demonic powers is authority and how this authority is um, given how this authority is recognized there's another insight that we we must gain and that is in the spiritual realm authority is recognized okay uh, how do we know this that incident we talked about acts 19 in that uh, what happens uh, paul you know he demonstrates uh, the authority of god supernatural things happen in the city of ephesus there are people who are not part of the kingdom of light meaning they are not born again so the sun seven sons of skiva uh, they come and they try to use only the principle what is the principle they use the name of jesus because they understood oh there is something about the name of jesus if we speak the name of jesus demons will flee so let's use it when they did that we see that there was a um, backlash because they did not you know they were part of the kingdom of darkness and they were trying to use the name of jesus and so what did the demons say they said something like uh, jesus we know paul we know who are you see this also helps us understand even the demonic powers they know who god's children are we don't have to give them a crash course on hey i am born again i am delegated at nothing if they see you they'll be like oh my goodness i better run because they know who you are and they are scared okay <laughs> so we have to understand that sometimes we don't understand it we think i should be scared of them but see here what are they saying jesus we know paul we know who are you in the same way when we are part of the kingdom of light even the demonic realm recognizes oh these people are coming they're born again they're part of the kingdom of light so the demonic spirits recognize and that's something we must recognize okay uh, and, and and so yeah we are we're just trying to build on our understanding of authority how beautiful yeah and the next point that we want to make here is um because of uh, the authority that has been given to us we as believers can overcome any oppression of the enemy so we just have to use our authority and overcome okay the enemy is doing this the enemy is doing that sometimes what happens to us as believers we are more interested in what the enemy is doing and we can narrate sometimes we can narrate oh enemy said like this he did like this this attack happened that attack yeah it's real we are not denying anything but you see no matter what the enemy does 
you and i can overcome because we are walking with authority now we are recognizing okay i have authority that we recognize how to use that authority how to overcome the enemy we are going to discuss and learn these things uh, one is again to learn it but another thing is to practice it okay so uh, i uh, there was a really nice question on the e learning platform on the e learning platform there's a, a place where people can post their questions so i don't know who exactly asked that question but they asked me the question they said okay you're teaching about authority how do you practice uh, authority tell me uh, and so i answered that question over there see every day we have to practice our authority isn't it so how do we practice it we first of all we practice it by recognizing it so how can we recognize it you declare you know i am the righteousness of god in christ jesus i am victorious we make that declaration in church sometimes personally i make that at that declaration i am blessed i am victorious i am prosperous i am triumphant i am a minister of god you know uh, i am a servant of christ so recognizing who i am in christ what am i doing i'm taking my position of authority today satan can come in many different ways to create trouble in my life but i'm taking my position i have the authority in christ jesus the victory of the cross is mine i declare it over my life in the name of jesus i declare it over my ministry i declare it over my family i declare it over my health i declare it over my finances you see what am i doing i'm taking my authority i know who i am you know satan i know so every day even in acknowledging who i am and it's not just just saying but believe confess release okay in doing that what's happening i'm taking my position in authority and i'm sure just by doing that there are certain things that i'm overcoming uh, in my life you know, maybe satan wanted to bring in some depression and some confusion in my life i'm saying forget all of that you know i am a child of god i am victorious god has called me for great things i know the plans he has for me to prosper me so i'm fighting against the lies of the devil just by taking authority in that way then of course you know many other things uh, maybe you know i'm i'm feeling a little like oh i'm getting this headache i have to go teach today what am i going i rebuke you in the name of jesus what am i doing just take authority maybe some sickness in my body or you know something or uh, something in my circumstances and i'm discerning in my spirit that hey this is not normal demon demonic influence you know confusion strife jealousy different things are happening i i take authority i bind you in jesus name i release the kingdom of god in this situation so this is how you exercise authority day to day basis daily basis okay so uh, i mean i just explained to the person who asked me this question what we are learning is very practical we need it daily daily okay i'm, sim I'm just telling you simple things you know sometimes uh, uh, there there have been times when uh, oppressive thoughts come maybe you're trying to go to bed you're trying to rest uh, but you're getting all these uh, tormenting thoughts what if this happens what if that happens in those moments you know i just take authority i take authority i bind all these uh, all this intimidation in the name of jesus i command you to leave me uh, the word of god says that you know uh, god blesses his children with good sleep uh, and uh, uh, the peace of god rules and reigns in my heart what are we doing we are speaking the word and releasing our authority these are always you speak the word you declare the word you acknowledge the word um you can rebuke you can bind you can release so daily begin to move in it that's the most important thing just knowing ah, i have authority you remember when we talked about authority we said it can go unused so you can have a beautiful uh, i'm just saying okay gold necklace okay you can have it but it can be in the shelf for your entire lifetime and never wore it even once authority is similar we can have it but we don't use it but every day whatever little we understand about authority take a step of faith and start to release it and use it okay so now we have seen 
yes, the demonic realm can have an influence or the flip side is also true. If we discipline ourselves in God and, you know, uh, we dedicate ourselves to God, the power of the kingdom of light can be demonstrated through my life in an amazing way. So that is also true. Okay. Uh, so these open doors or these ways of engagement work for both the spirit worlds either darkness or light and that helps us uh, to move forward and we've seen how um, uh, the spirit world recognizes authority now we might have this question that uh, why all this authority you no know, god is sovereign isn't it god is powerful uh, god is sovereign uh, let him do let him take authority Sometimes believers think like that. We we feel that uh, uh, because God is so mighty, He will deal with the devil. Okay? He will deal with the demonic spirits. I don't have to do anything about it. But when we look at scripture, it's very clear that man was created to have dominion, to subdue, to be fruitful, to multiply. All these are the blessings that God has put upon you and me, mankind. Okay. And God wants us to co labor with Him. And so, even when it comes to releasing the authority of God, can God do? He can do. Can He, he uh, you know, uh, take charge of the situation and rebuke the devil and bind the devil? Can God do all that? He can do it. However, we see that he has put us in that place to be his representative. Okay. And so uh, I'll just come to you. So we have to recognize, yes, God is sovereign. But the reason he gave me delegated authority, I send you. Jesus sent, isn't it? He sent his disciples. And then later, uh, as he was ascending, what he told is, Everyone who believes in me, you go, you make an impact in the world out there. I give you authority. So if he's giving us authority, it's quite clear that God has an intention for man to use that authority. He first of all created us with that authority and he wants us to use the authority. So he's expecting a partnership where we have been given that authority and we have to exercise it. Even though he can, we are supposed to exercise it. So uh, yes, Sean, you have a question along those lines? Yeah, kindly use the mic, please. Uh, not as much as a question. Not as much as a question. I just want to add to your point that yes. uh, if I mean, God has given us all this, of course, God can do all this. Then why, then why would God give free will? If he, he can do all this, he can just uh, do what he's been doing such a long time and just take control of everything. But he's given us free will, you know, for us to decide, for us to take charge of, uh, for us to chase charge of the authority that he's given us. Yes. And one more thing I want to ask is that, uh, I mean, uh, we, uh, I mean, de demons know much better than us who God is, who he is. But why is it the fact that they go against, even though knowing all that, who God is? Um, uh, can you come again? That Sorry. last part, I couldn't hear you. Sorry. Um, demons know God, who he is. Mm -hmm. You know, they, In fact, much better than us, rather. But why do they go against God mm -hmm. when knowing all that? Okay, okay. Um, uh, I can answer that question, but can I answer a little later because we're going to talk about demons. Yeah, okay. Man. Okay, <laughs> so all about demons. Okay, so man. hopefully you will get okay, a good answer in that. Yeah, sure. Thank you for uh, adding that point. Uh, very relevant to what we are discussing. So we are saying that God is sovereign. We accept that. Uh, and he is all powerful. He can do things on our behalf. But this is the design of God that man has been given authority originally. And even after Jesus came, we've been given authority, delegated authority. We are supposed to use it. So what are the ways in which we can use it? A few things to uh, point out right now. One is the power of the tongue. Proverbs 18, 21. What does it say? Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. So one way in which 
authority can be released is what are we speaking we can be speaking blessing or we can be speaking you know uh, yeah curses or um, confusion fear disappointment discouragement sad you see right there is the exercise of authority if i can read the word and i can speak in line with the word yes my situation looks very difficult but you know uh, god leads me in triumph through christ jesus he will lead me in triumphant victory in christ jesus you see what am i doing i'm releasing that authority through the power of my tongue okay uh so many so many situations in everyday life you know when people say how do you use your authority this is the simplest way what are you saying to yourself what are you saying to what are you saying about your family what are you saying about your ministry okay so just by the words that i'm speaking what i believe in my heart and what i'm saying with my mouth i'm releasing the authority of god okay so that's a wonderful way in which god has given us the ability to release our authority use your words speak align to the word of god then exercise of faith okay again you know you have an entire course on faith we know when we take up um, by faith we begin to move by faith uh, we we um, claim our healing or by faith we we are pursuing the call of god over our lives by faith we are doing different things we are journeying with god what's happening again that's a way in which i'm taking my position my right position and i'm releasing my authority even let's say uh, i'm praying for somebody who's sick what does the bible say in james 5 the prayer of faith will heal the sick and god save the sick and god will raise him up so what happened there faith release of faith we hear something somebody gives prayer request brother can you pray for this can you pray so when i'm praying what am i doing i'm releasing my faith they maybe they narrated this very sad story you know this has happened they cannot survive okay okay no problem by faith can i pray for you so when i pray what happens i'm releasing faith So when I'm releasing faith, what am I doing? I'm actually taking authority. Satan, you're trying to rule by sickness. You're trying to rule by calamity and destruction. Come on, I'm taking authority on that because the Word of God says, Jehovah Rapha, God has a covenant of healing with me. So I'm releasing my faith for that situation to be changed. Does it look like authority? Yeah, it looks like authority. Faith. you walk by faith exercise your faith that's a way of releasing authority uh and yes there are many other ways you know obedience to uh the principles of god's word something as simple as um you know the law of sowing and reaping what is sowing and reaping in the bible there are many verses in which we read you know if you sow to the spirit you will reap of the spirit if you sow to the flesh you will reap of the flesh similarly there are other passages that say uh, you basically you you invest in godly things okay uh, so i am sowing in prayer i will reap of the answers uh, or you know i'm sowing in faith uh, and i'm reaping of the results of it so sowing and reaping is a principle now how does exercise of authority come in you know the law of sowing and reaping or any other uh, principles of god's word see basically by faith i am obeying so when i'm obeying what happens god's power is seen in my life okay so god's authority is released so i'm just walking aligned to what the word says and all the laws which are in the word and uh, i'm exercising my authority so let's take for example you know in the bible it says like if you um give to god will he not open up the windows of heaven and pour out his blessing so this is talking about financially giving unto god okay and the kingdom so what goes with it see there's one thing you give to god 
and then reaping reaping is god is saying i'm promising you i will bless you financially if you uh, sow in financially okay uh, so maybe you're doing it faithfully but somewhere along the line the enemy comes to torment and say oh you gave but still you're not getting but you can go by the word isn't it what did you do by faith you're obeying faithfully sincerely the word so you can still stand on the word that scripture and say see look this is what god's word says i have sown by faith god will bless me god's blessing will come into my life he will give uh, um, uh, abundantly for me to have and to do his work i think it's second corinthians 9 verse 8 which which says that so in all these steps of obedience that we take uh, along the word of god again we are releasing authority because there's a faith there on what god is saying surely i will see the results so these are all ways in which we walk in our authority um the authority that we recognize so um if there are any questions uh, or comments please feel free at any point you can stop me and um, we can talk about those things so now let's come to a very important understanding of these words power and authority so in the scriptures uh, we find in certain passages the use of both of these terms uh, could somebody please read from matthew chapter 10 and verse 1 and when he had called his 12 disciples to him he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease okay that's great um could you please read on uh, read from luke 4 and verse 14 also then jesus returned in the power of the spirit to galilee and news of him went out through all the surrounding region okay thank you so much um okay so in both these instances the term there is power isn't it uh, matthew 10:1 we saw a power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease again look for 14 then jesus returned in the power of the spirit to galilee both the english words are power but if you look up the greek words they are two different words so in the first scripture matthew 10:1 that word power is uh, the greek word exousia Okay, it's the Greek word exousia. In the second scripture that we read, the word power there is the Greek word dunamis. In English, same word power. Sometimes it's it's easy. It's it's like uh, mm, how uh, for the word love in the English, say you know Jesus, um, uh, what. we see that the father loved the son uh, and uh, love one another we see the same word love but when you look up the greek you might have other words there for example like you know you you would find the word agape which means the god kind of love unconditional love uh, and in some places where it would say love one another you would find the word philio it is a brotherly love where you know you love one another so uh, we must go by what the original you know senses from that particular uh, passage so here in english we saw the same word power power but when we look up the greek it's exousia and dunamis what is the difference between exousia and dunamis okay both are greek words so the word exousia it means that jesus had authority okay authority uh it can also be 
understood as um, uh, a right. He had the right. So when he's casting out demons, you can imagine with me, how would a, how did he generally cast out demons? He just spoke a word, right? A rebuke. And the demon would leave. So what is he using when the scripture says power? With power, he cast out. So he's actually using his authority. And you could even say delegated authority in a way because you know the father sent him and he had the authority. He had the right over the demonic world. And so exousia is authority. Jesus used his authority to um, cast out demons. Now, Acts chapter, uh, sorry, Luke chapter 4, verse 14, where it, where it says that he came back with the power, the power of the Spirit to Galilee. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. So there is again a power of the Spirit. We would notice that there are many other passages that talk about the power of the Spirit that worked through the life of Jesus. Okay, And out of that power, many miracles were done, many healings were done, uh, you know, demons were cast out. So what is this power? What is the second power through which, you know, miracles, healings and all took place? It is the word dunamis. Okay? It's the word dunamis. And dunamis uh, refers to miraculous power. Okay? It refers to strength. It refers to might. So you see, like power coming in uh, and, and doing something supernatural uh, or the ability, that is dunamis. So though there are two words used, we are quite clear that in the ministry of Jesus, he walked with exousia which is authority, right. Hey, this is my right. And he did the works of God. He also used dunamis, miraculous power, strength, ability, might of God, where he went and he started setting people free from the oppression of the devil. So these are the two things that we have to understand. We carry the authority of God and we also release the power of God or the dunamis of God. So Jesus worked that way and he wanted his disciples also to move in the same manner. So could somebody read from Luke chapter 10 and verse 19 please? Be behold, I give you the authority to Temple on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Mm, very good. So, uh, notice here, both these words are used differently. Even in the English, um, you know, it, it says, Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall hurt you so both these words are used greek words and in english it's captured the same way so the word authority there is exousia i give you authority over serpents and scorpions now so far we were talking we said oh there are two kingdoms and uh, the kingdom of darkness recognizes us but we have delegated authority and what is jesus saying and this is even before the cross even before he died on the cross he's saying i'm giving you authority okay on the powers of the uh, enemy that that even and he says the power of the enemy. That means the dunamis. The word used there is dunamis. Okay, the ability or the strength or the miraculous works of the uh, evil one. We have authority to overcome what the enemy is doing. We have the authority and we also have the power of the spirit or the dunamis of the spirit to continue doing the greater works that Jesus has called us to do. So as believers, you know, we have to understand this. Jesus walked with exousia and dunamis. Okay. 
and he told his followers i'm giving you exousia we have delegated authority and we can overcome you know, any work of the enemy so that power also has been given to us so uh, once we have all of this clear we are moving on to the next topic here which is about uh, satan and his demons so if you have a question anywhere you know just feel free you can interrupt and ask and hopefully uh, uh, you know sean's question will be clarified as we do this um uh, okay so see originally it was two separate things that were being referred to Okay, um, I'll I'll give you. Uh, um, I mean, this is the best thing that I can think of. I'm, I hope I'm correct. Okay, uh, so you see one incident in Matthew chapter twelve where Jesus casts out a demon spirit, and uh, you know he says something like, you know, I cast it out by the spirit of God. He says I cast it out by the spirit of God. So. How did he do it? He did it by the power of the Spirit. We know that the Holy Spirit, he comes to empower us. Okay, so the, so the miraculous power of God flows through the Spirit. So we can consider that as dunamis. The miraculous power of God is at work. But why did Jesus do that? Because he had exousia. He knew when he saw the demon spirit affecting or afflicting uh, the person he knew that that's not correct it's not supposed to these these demon spirits are not supposed to uh, afflict human beings and he knew that he had the right or the authority over that demonic spirit and so you see the difference there power of god is at work which is dunamis the power which is working is dunamis. But the understanding of the authority is exousia. So can you see a little bit of difference? Yeah. Yes, that's true. Correct. Correct. You're right. We need the empower. We need the power of the spirit, no? To release. Right. That's very right. Yeah, sure. OK. So we have some uh, understanding there. Um, so now coming to, um, I don't know if the uh, online students heard the question. Uh, so Anand said, why? what is the difference, right? Exousia and dunamis. Why do we need two different things? But basically, they are different things. Just that in the English, they're both mentioned as the same word power. Okay, so we, we understood that. OK, uh, we have two more questions. So let's take it up. I'll go with Vimal first. Yes, Vimal. Yes, ma'am. Last class, you told about that uh, when Jesus is in that boat, disciples are sleeping. So Jesus rebuked the storm. And you told, like, because that circumstance is not from God, so that's why Jesus yes. rebuked that. Yes. But how can we know the circumstances is from God or it's from devil? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how do we know that circumstances are uh, from God or from the devil? Mm -hmm. See, this we will have to look at it, um, you know, situation by situation. Not everything is the devil. Okay, uh, and for us to discern, uh, we we can pray, we can ask God to speak, uh, we can um, go by what the Word instructs us, uh, we can go by what the Holy Spirit is giving witness to our spirit. All this will help us understand, you know, whether what we are going through is uh, Satan or if it is God. Okay, so that's the only way. Not every situation is the devil. Some situations can be uh, 
you know, because Satan is trying to oppose us or he's trying to put sickness or he's trying to put some form of, uh, you know, like um, you could say two friends. They have a good relationship, but suddenly a uh, lot of fighting and jealousy, something very abnormal. It's not even normal. You know, it, it's very, very abnormal. Such things repeatedly they keep taking place. Somewhere you can discern that, hey, this is not normal. Uh, it's not even God. It's not even these people, but there seems to be some sort of a demonic influence. Okay, simple example I gave you. Uh, but there could be other times where, uh, let's say, you know, there are, what example? Okay. Uh, like Jonah, okay, he is going in a certain direction, but uh, that's not God's plan for him, though he's trying his best. The situation was God, isn't it? He might think, why is all this happening? Why is there a storm? But this particular storm, it's, yeah, if you, if you, if you interpret it in the wrong way, it's uh, different. Uh, but we know that God was trying to guide him to his uh, spot of assignment. Okay, so over here also storm, but it's not from the devil. God is trying to direct him to his destiny. So situation by situation, we have to discern. It's hard to tell broadly that uh, you know it's uh, the devil or God. Uh, uh, does it help? Okay, great. <laughs> okay uh let let shall we finish maybe it's a follow-up yeah tell me uh, um, it's a question like uh, i saw many people are doing uh, like demons are coming in that they can do any many things unusual things so i saw like in uttarakhand na, so many people used to burn the rod and it's become red and they then they eat so uh, can demons give the power to human body? Yes, they can. They can. See, what did we read now in Luke 10, 19? We, we read that, no. What did Jesus say? I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, which is referring to the demonic realm, um, and over all the power of the enemy. See, even Jesus is saying that there is a form of power that the demonic realm can reveal okay however we will study in this course that the uh, demonic realm or the demonic power is no comparison to god his authority and his power for example just for your understanding remember moses and the magicians in pharaoh's court uh, he did supernatural things they also did supernatural things okay but thank god moses didn't get scared yes the demonic is demonstrating some power some power but what is the end result moses's rod gobbled up all the other uh, snakes okay the moses snake gobbled up the other snakes so god's power will conquer ultimately so it is true that we can see the demonstration of power to some extent but we should not get intimidated that oh my goodness what will i do now no 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 it's nothing compared to the power of god that we have to understand. Okay? Sure. <laughs> Follow up question. <laughs> oh, okay. Why didn't he take back the powers of why didn't God take back the powers of the uh, devil? Okay, so the way we see this is see, God has done what he promised, which is to redeem us. Okay, and as we study scriptures, we'll recognize that there is a set time when satan will be imprisoned okay so there are all those things which are coming up he will be imprisoned and then again during the millennium he will be let out till uh, uh, the right time when god is going to completely banish him uh, so we are going by god's timetable and his calendar so this is the time where he is a defeated enemy okay he's a defeated enemy but He's still here. And what happens, you know, sometimes when we are defeated and we have a little bit of chance, we try to, um, you know, what do you say, over-enthusiasm. 
we do so many things right to uh, somehow try to make it work satan is somewhat like that so he will do his all his tactics he will try to show because he knows his time is up very soon he has to face the judgment of god okay i hope it helps okay great yes shan aha uh -huh. and anand was talking about uh, how um, you know why why this like um, in uh, there is the two words for miraculous power and then other one is power i mean i have noticed that uh, most of the times you won't find the description you want in english so you'll have to go to other languages i see many times when it comes to in, in my church itself we have a uh, you know ministry happening in tamil and in english so some words you don't find in uh, in uh, in english you'll find in tamil with much better clarity or much better understanding so i've seen that another thing i wanted to say is to women's question was about uh, now only you know if a certain like problem or some a hurdle comes is it like uh, is it something that's set by god or something set by uh, a demon or is it trapped by uh, the e evil one so for that i yeah. uh, for that i wanted to say my op opinion was that um, i feel i mean you would know if you um, i mean you know in your heart if it is a trap from god or if it's not if not you can always meditate and you will find the answer to that question okay so yes. uh, to discern whether something is yeah, from discern. god or the enemy yeah, like you have to really walk with the lord is what you're saying right and then we'll be able to understand okay sure sure uh, and uh, just going back to that um, comment you made sean so i know that the meaning sometimes is uh, better understood in other languages but this is the method the method we should use is go from the original okay so maybe for example i'm just saying like uh, if i if i feel i read a text and uh, i understand it better in hindi i like the words in hindi now the question is accurate interpretation i may like it in hindi but is that hindi translation the accurate uh, the orig what the see basically it's like uh, if i write this book okay let's imagine i have written a book uh, i'm trying to say something and i want all of you to understand what i am trying to say okay now if if one of you says a completely different story as compared to the book that i wrote i'll be so angry i'll be like hey that's not what i'm trying to say and uh, you know somebody is saying a different story bible interpretation is like that god by his spirit has an original um message that he's trying to communicate now when it comes to interpretation translation of scriptures if we say something else than what god is trying to say there's a problem okay and now somebody who reads that other book uh, which is saying something totally different might like it they might say oh wow so nice but that's not the original author's mind so uh, point i'm making is always try to ask the question what did god intend to say okay and how to find that you have an entire course on hermeneutics so that is the reason it's best to go to original languages so you will look it up in hebrew you look it up in greek uh, in that context why did they say that and scripture should interpret scripture so then i get the meaning from it okay so this is the meaning of the author this is what the author wanted to say so that's the right way to go about it so that's the reason even today in english what did we see we saw power power same word power so okay fine but when you go to why did we go to the greek what is the original intention what did the writer want to say so there we understood in greek there are two different words one is authority authority is different power is different so now it has deepened our understanding okay so i can walk in authority but that can also be coupled with power the release of god's power wow it gives me some meaning now to uh, actually use it in my life so that's how we would uh, approach it john so always go back um, you know back to greek and hebrew rather than going in the other direction going to a language that we like because we don't know whether it is interpreted correctly or not you got my point yeah
like how you said when you go back to greek you get that exact meaning or the exact huh. name that's why i want to say it other languages sometimes yes. you might get the exact meaning in that language yes. you don't want to say yes 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 that that's the reason we should do it okay all right so um good i think uh, we have some good questions and uh, we will study about the kingdom of satan and his demons in the next class okay um uh, right now we can close off with a word of prayer from that table either of you please lead us in prayer Heavenly Father, thank you very much for bringing us here today for the Nancy Ma'am's class, Heavenly Father. Thank you very much for leading us right to us, class, Heavenly Father. Help us to ask questions, Heavenly Father, and clarify us questions, Heavenly Father. And thank you very much for helping us to interact with class, Heavenly Father. And uh, help us to have more classes like this, Heavenly Father. And thank you once again for bringing us all here, Heavenly Father, and deepen our understanding today, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, everyone. Uh, continue to refer to your notes, okay, to gain more understanding and use your authority. Don't wait to finish this course, okay, to start using your authority. Okay. Anyway, okay. All right. We shall meet next week. Thank you, all the online students. God bless you. Have a great day.